Joining us now to give us his take on our country's skyrocketing inflation rates is Congressman Darrell Issa. Congressman, great to see you. Uh, we just heard uh, from some other guests. What do you think is driving this inflation and what can be done about it? Well, economic inefficiency is what's driving it. And a lot of people want to talk around the problem. When they talk about the supply chain, there are many problems in the supply chain that could be solved that are not being solved, including our port of entry uh, up in Long Beach. Uh, where there are some simple solutions that should be applied that haven't been. When it comes to fuel, uh, I will tell you both in classified and in unclassified settings, we're getting the same report, which is, look, the Russians are still pumping as much fuel and selling it. Ukraine was not a fuel producer so when you're uh, of any significance. So when you look at the actual global supply of fuel, it is substantially similar to where it was before the war. But prices were going up beforehand. They were going up because demand was exceeding supply. And America and other countries that could surge the amount of oil and natural gas we're producing were not responding. Those are some of the areas that are doing it. Obviously, the Fed is concerned about inflation. Uh, I lived through the Jimmy Carter era and the uh, sky-high interest rates and sky-high inflation and how long it took to, to break the back of inflation. We need to do it earlier and have it be less painful to the American people. And that means action now, action that we're not seeing out of Washington yet. So tell us what kind of action that is. We've heard that the Fed is expected to increase interest rates. Some people think, well, that might do it. What do you think needs to be done? But look, the Fed increasing interest rates slows down an economy. The Fed increasing interest rates slows down demand. Uh, it's gonna slow down the housing market. It's gonna slow down a lot of things. But you know, to be honest, my constituents, your viewers, they are in fact the constituents that are going to be told, here's this new tax on you. You already have a tax uh, in the sense of inflation. We're going to also raise interest rates, which is another tax on what people who have debt, uh, particularly homeowners uh, or someone that's buying a new car, are going to have to pay. So the fact that we're going to raise taxes, in a sense, on American people's ability to spend, and it will slow the economy, is not a solution for the inefficiency. We don't have enough chassis at the port of entry. We, the governor is not allowing enough uh, vehicles to show up. The stevedores are not uh, living up to what they should be doing. Uh, each of those things are causing a slowdown at one place that we could all see off our port. But when you look at not surging our fuel uh, production, particularly natural gas, um, for the last 18 months. And by the way, the dollars are not flowing to those companies that need the capital to increase our production, to bring down those prices. That's a problem. We have some other problems that uh, continue. Today, the president announced that he's going to uh, surge the amount of ethanol. Well, you know, the interesting thing is if you make more ethanol, all you're doing is taking more of the food that animals would eat more of the food that you and I would eat and moving it into fuel. That's not going to change what it costs at the grocery store. So even some of the things that are well intended are going to affect our ability to buy the essentials of, of life. Those are all things that need to happen. One of the things that, that is essential though is we need to change the incentive from not working to working. We need to get people back into the workforce. That includes retirees uh, because if we had more workers in the workforce, we would in fact be alleviating some of these supply problems. Um, that's one of the things we could do and could do fairly easily. Uh, right now, that's not what we're hearing. Today, again, the president talked about, you know, how many overpasses need to be worked on in Iowa. Well, the bills that have been passed through Congress do very little for that kind of infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, and that kind of infrastructure spending is what you do to get out of a recession. It's not what you do when you have runaway inflation. Well, Congressman, let me just get one more question in. Do you think we're heading towards a recession? What do you think the rest of this year looks like? Look, boom always leads to bust. So the boom in the housing uh, and other real estate market is unsustainable. Uh, and it's a challenge because there aren't enough homes being produced. So on top of the fact that we may see homes become unaffordable because of interest rate rises, uh, we, are, we have not solved some of the problems of, of supply chain that are causing the cost of homes to rise. The biggest thing that government needs to do is it needs to stop overspending. Government spending less will slow the economy without 
uh, causing huge burden on the American people. Getting people back into those jobs that are available will improve our efficiency. Those are things we need to do. And then around the world, we need to have more sensible energy policies. Uh, of course, we want to go to more renewables, but we don't want to do it at the cost of the of first world uh, living. And that's what we're doing right now if we're not careful. Um, sure. You know, it's we're, we're still going to consume those fossil fuels for the foreseeable future. Lastly, here in California, look, we are actually overproducing electricity during the day that we can't use. And we're still short at night because we don't have a sound energy policy, particularly for electricity. Mm -hmm. All of those things are, are policies that need to change. And most of them come from Washington. Some come from Sacramento. Certainly a very complex issue. Thanks for providing some light on it. I appreciate it. Uh, Representative Daryl Issa for us. Uh, Congressman, thanks. Good to see you. Thank you.